Now let's discuss the eye diagram. Our main objective is to get familiar with the eye diagram or pattern and then use this diagram to evaluate the noise, intersymbol interference and other performance metrics like time jitter and what have you. So we'll get exposed to the eye diagram and see how we use it. We'll look at some examples. What's the eye diagram? The eye diagram is a synchronized superposition of all possible realization of a signal of interest at the receiver site, at the receiver output, viewed in a particular signal interval. For example, you can see here we have a pulse a PAM or pulse amplitude modulation where we have either positive or negative signal. We have the bit duration. These are the bit durations. And we could be sending 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, for example. And the sequence continues like this. If you look at only one time slot, one time instant, okay, perhaps we can use here, uh, uh, can draw some lines to show the idea. If you have the following time instant, for example, this is the time instant where we have one bit, then another time instant, third one, so on. Then we can combine them all together. We superimpose them on top of each other. What we will get is either uh, what you see in this diagram is either a positive pulse or a negative one. And because of um, eyes eye intersymbol interference, we will have some values in between. So this is called an eye diagram because it looks like an eye. Uh, okay, so this is like an eye diagram where it looks like an eye. This can have can be used to assess the performance of the network. So this is called the eye diagram, where it's a superposition of uh, images superimposed to represent the pulses. Let's see what it means and how it's, it becomes uh, useful. This example that you see in this diagram is for the case of pulse amplitude moderation with m equal to 2. You either send uh, the positive cycle or the negative cycle. So you either send uh, a positive pulse or a negative one. The example that we see on the left, this is the eye that we are after. The example on the left, for the case of m equal to 4, we're getting multiple eyes. So this is one eye, another eye, a third eye, a fourth eye, or just three of them. So in general, we can generalize that for the case of PAM with m addy communication, you are going to get number of eyes equal to m minus 1. So here m equal to 4, and this is why we have three eyes. If m was equal to 8, we'll get, we'll get 7 and so on. So in this slide, we're just defining what eye diagram is, and we're showing two examples, one for, for m equal to 2 and one for m equal to 4. Now let's look at the features of, uh, let's look at the features of the eye pattern. What you see here in front of you is an eye. This is an example of um, m equal to 2, pulse amplitude modulation. You can see that we have a positive pulse and or a negative pulse. These are the side pulses. This is caused by ISI and, and other stuff. So what are the features that you can read from this eye pattern? Why this is important? The eye pattern for a communication engineer is like the X-ray for a medical doctor. Now, we will start with the time axis. This point in time is the best sampling time because here you can distinguish the positive from the negative. So if you want to make a decision, this is like the bit duration. Okay. If you want to make a decision, then you better make the decision here because we have the highest distinction between the positive and the negative. The second thing is from here to here, from this edge to this edge, from the two, from these edges to this edge, from here to here, from here to here, this is called the eye width. While from here to here, this is called the zero crossing time jitter because sometimes we cross the zero here, sometimes here, sometimes here. So we have a range of uh, of zero crossing because we don't have exact timing. For the y-axis, we start with the most important value, which is the noise margin from here to here. How much extra noise you can tolerate before the eye closes? You would love to have an open eye because the open eye means we have margin for noise. Now, the second thing is the eye height, which is the value from here to here, almost double the noise margin. And then from outside, from the highest possible amplitude to the minimum, is called the eye amplitude. Uh, the variation at 
of the amplitude at the sampling uh, instance, at the best sampling time here, the variation from the minimum to the maximum, it's called the amplitude jitter, the amplitude jitter from here to here, because this is the variation on the amplitude. While the slope here represents the time sensitivity. If you have if you have a strong slope or large slope, it means any change on the time axis would result in um, dramatic impact on the amplitude. While if you have a small slope, it means that timing errors will not result in a large time, uh, large amplitude change. I'm just showing you on the side, the diagram shows you a real experimental device with measured eye diagram. You can see this, you can see on the diagram the zero crossing jitter here. You can see the variation on the amplitude, so we can take all the possible readings. While the lower diagram shows you the case of the eye pattern for PSK. If we, are, if we are not using amplitude example for the PSK, you will not get an eye as per se like this one. You'll get you'll get the constellation diagram, and then uh, you'd like to have distinguished pulses. If we have a cloud, it means we have more errors. So for PSK, we'll not get an eye, but we can get the constellation diagram. Those are used to evaluate the performance of, uh, or the noise performance, or ice eye performance of the system. Now let's do now let's do this practice for the eye pattern. It says sketch the eye diagram given the following values with proper scale. So we have this diagram. We need to show the values. The dis the distortion of zero crossing equal to 10 microsecond. It's a time axis. So you expect this to be on the x axis. Can you guess? Yes. Here we go. You can sketch it here or here. Now, the timing interval over which the received signal can be sampled, 100 microsecond, again, it's across the time axis. And then it says noise over margin, noise over margin, that's um, what we have here, 4 volts. Distortion of oh, at the sampling interval, then this is the distortion at the sampling interval. Okay, now it says uh, approximately what is the sensitivity to timing error? Remember, this is related to the slope. So delta y over delta x, 4 volts divided by 50 microsecond for from here to here we have just 50 microsecond of course it could be positive or negative it depends on the pulse so plus or minus 4 volts divided by 50 micro and that that's about plus or minus 80 kilovolt per second so if you have an error of one second you get 80 kilovolt of course we're not at that scale we use microsecond to represent the error so you get of course millivolts uh, for for the, for the error that's it for the ipad 10 i hope that you got the idea and um, you can watch more videos about the eye pattern.